What's happening people? I have a beast of a video for you this week where I will be showing you 5 quick fire tips for sci-fi lighting in Photoshop. Sci-fi artworks are all the rage at the moment with games like Cyberpunk 2077 and movies like Blade Runner 2049 that have created striking visual aesthetics that photo manipulators want to emulate. But if you are just starting out in Photoshop it can be hard to know where to start when wanting to create dynamic sci-fi artworks with cool lighting. So, stick around because I'll be teaching you about rim lights, glowing neon lights and I'll even be digging into atmospheric light. I'll be giving you some free stop model images from this shoot as well to play around with. These 5 quick fire tips will guide you, give you inspiration and hopefully a starting point for your own sci-fi art that will capture the attention of your peers. Learn how to create striking visual lighting that adds a sense of depth and realism to your sci-fi art. Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Clinton Lofthouse, a professional photographer and digital artist from the UK, and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. This week I'm going to be getting into sci-fi lighting. I know that's something you guys love, so here are five quick fire tips for sci-fi lighting in Photoshop. If you do want to go deeper into learning how to create realistic or fantasy composites, then be sure to check out my new course, The Art of Composite. The link is in the description. So for this video I'm going to dissect this large sci-fi composite that I created. So strap on your jetpacks, fire up your laser visor and unholster your ray gun. Let's jump into the first tip, which is deep red ambient lighting that permeates through the whole image. If you've watched any of my videos so far, and I hope you have, you'll know that I am a sucker for pre-planning and pre-visualising. I believe it leads to a better art all around and this image was no different. I had a rough sketch and a limited colour scheme. If you look at the image, you will see the images reds, blues and darks with a hint of orange slash yellow. This is a triadic colour scheme from a colour wheel, where three opposing equally spaced colours are used together to create a contrasting but dynamic and visually pleasing palette. Now that's a mouthful. <laughs> As you know, this wasn't random. I designed the colours in my image to work this way. Knowing that there was going to be a lot of red ambient light in the artwork, I knew how I needed to light my model in the studio. This is a good thing about pre-planning, it takes out all the guesswork and working on the fly, which I would suggest you don't do. With our trusty colour scheme in mind, I lit my model with two red gels on studio lights. I set the red lights to create the rim light and I had a third light just above the model and behind like a hair light to fill in the shadows and create some rim as well. I like to use a free lighting setup in most of my model shoots just because I feel it adds a really dramatic feel to any model, especially when they are in costume, it adds depth and shape to them that I feel works best for these kind of composites. Now I know what you're thinking, well I don't have a camera, well don't worry, if you don't have a camera or you can't shoot your own photos, Adobe stock can come to the rescue, just search for the relevant model stock and download it. Once the model was cut out, I didn't need to do much just because we had what we wanted in camera. All I had to do was boost the red light with a curves adjustment and we were sorted. Our model now fits into the colour scheme of the background with ease. This leads us nicely into the manual rim light that is on our model's hat and a little on his shoulders and the gun. I did set up a hair light above the model but it didn't feel dramatic enough or create enough separation from the background. Adding a light would blend him into the scene, add realism and separate him from the background. Now that's a composite triple threat my friends. But how do we create the manual rim light I hear you shout from the back? Well pretty simple, one man one brush. No not that kind of thing you dirty buggers, I know what you guys were thinking, I'm on about painted rim lights. Painted rim lights seem to be all the rage at the moment especially in photo manipulation circles. Every day I must see around 50 images with painted neon rim lights, but like everything in life, with great photoshop powers come great design responsibility. I'm Spider-Man. Make sure your rim lights have a point and that they make sense in realism terms, but also storytelling terms. I know life would be a lot more fun if we walked around surrounded by neon lights, but after a while it would become annoying and predictable. Kind of like my Instagram feed at the moment. But I digress, let's get back to the image. To create the hair rim light on my model for this image, it was very simple. All I did was use a soft brush and paint in the highlight colour on a blank layer that is clipped to my model. Clipping a blank layer to cut a person out in Photoshop is a great way to paint rim light because once clipped, your paint will not spill over the edges of the cutout. And how goddamn awesome is that? 
Now you know how to wield your powers of manual rim lighting, let's dive into quick fire tip number 3, which is the final light on our main subject, the visor light. So the visor light works in two ways, it adds to the storytelling, but more importantly it brings attention to our main subject, the model. Because our model is mainly covered in deep reds, a pop of neon blue on his body draws our eye to it, specifically his face, where the emotion of the image is. Not only that, it also works with our planned limited colour scheme. Again, this was super easy to apply and it's pretty similar to how we create the hat light. Take one blank layer, switch it to a linear dodge blend mode and then select a similar but lighter blue to your visor. All we do then is paint over the specific areas of the visor and that's it. Very simple. See how the blend mode creates a cool glow. Super simple but super effective. We're now going to move on from the model to the background with quick fire tip number 4. And this is the city haze light, or in compositional terms, aerial perspective. Aerial perspective is a method of creating the illusion of depth, or recession in a painting or drawing, by modulating colour to simulate the changes affected by the atmosphere, on the colours of things seen in the distance. Again, this helps our artwork in three ways. It adds realism, it creates separation between different planes with similar tones, and it adds depth to our images. So let's play a game. I want to play the game. Imagine you stood atop a mountain, wearing your favourite, I don't know, hobbit pants, when you look out across the vista, trying to find Mordor, however you pronounce it, <laughs> and, the, and the landscape stretches out in front of you. I can guarantee there will be atmospheric haze between the mountains in the distance. It's usually a less contrasted blue haze which is created by the dispersion and dust and moisture particles in the air. For many years, artists have been adding aerial perspective to their drawings and paintings to add a sense of depth and realism. And as photo manipulators and digital artists, we can try do the same. All we need to do is simply paint in the haze between the certain layers on our background. If you do enjoy this compositional stuff, then and you want to go a little bit deeper into it, then I do go over these in more detail in my new course, The Art of Composite. There is a link in the description. We're nearly there guys, the finish line is in sight. All we need to do now is add that final touch to our sci-fi artwork. And this is where quick fire tip number 5 comes into play. We can't have a city sci-fi image without neon lights. When Blade Runner was released back in the 80s, showing my age now aren't I? It changed how we all envisioned the future. Drenched in neon lights and mist, it was completely different to the clean sci-fi from the 50s, 60s and 70s. You can't think of dystopian future anymore without having Blade Runner's neon aesthetic in your mind. Although we must try to be original, we also want to add influence and touches from the things that inspire us to create something recycled but new. So littering our city with neon not only adds visual interest to the dark buildings, but it breaks up the large dark areas. It also adds a storytelling and world building element. For the neon to work in our image they need to follow our limited triadic colour scheme. So they are all changed to red, blue, yellow or a mixture of the three. The neon signs are easy to add, all you need to do is source a neon sign image, Adobe Stock is good for this. They are usually set to black so all you need to do is switch their blend mode to screen and you have an instant neon light that you can place where you want. To change the colours of the light just add a hue saturation adjustment layer and clip it to your neon sign. Then simply use the slider to change the hue. If you want to add a stronger glow to your neon, you can sample the colour, make it a little lighter and then paint over the sign with a brush, set to a blend mode like screen, linear dodge or colour dodge. Again, very simple but so so effective. An extra tip I can give you to add realism is to make your lights affect the atmosphere around them. For example, we have rain in this image, so in the reality the lights would affect the raindrops. Where the lights are, the rain coming down over that light would be brighter and colours like that light as it reflects the colour back. Think of a street lamp at night. In the light you can see the raindrops but they disappear a little as the light fades out. As you can see there are many ways to add sci-fi light into your artworks. These are just five ways. But like anything in Photoshop, there are probably a hundred more ways to do it. Do what works for you. Trial, experiment, but don't forget to follow the rules of art and design to get better results. I hope you liked this video, if you did you might enjoy my previous video showing you three underrated skills that Photoshop beginners need. Thanks a lot guys, 